So I have a little bit of a different shoot today. I'm utilizing my living room space as a makeshift studio and I'm having someone come here today to film some like interview style um, videos. I'm running everything into a ATAM just to really get a bigger screen. Um, but yeah, it's definitely overkill. I don't really need all this stuff, but since I have it, might as well just set it up. Um, but yeah, I had a audio package. It was just a, a lav and then a, a boom mic over there. And then um, as far as the setup, we had a, I believe this is a 10 foot seamless uh, gray background, paper background. Um, and then as far as lighting, I just had a, a two foot tube kind of giving a nice gradient on the background. And then another two foot two tube that was giving a nice uh, hair light as well as a little fill in the background. And then as far as key light, I had a um, Aperture 600D with a lantern attachment. And then I think we were at like, yeah, like 5% on the key light. And then those tube lights were at like 20% or something like that. Just very um, low intensity because on camera, I think I was at the second native ISO, which is like 12,800. And then a little bit of ND just to um, bring the levels back down exposure wise. Um, and then I did have a little bit of a fill, um, some little um, MC, um, whatever these are, the Aperture MC lights. I had two of those um, with the little diffusion they're at like 20% or something like that. And then I also had some negative fill as well as um, some sound treatment. It kind of acted as a little bit of um, everything. And then also blocking out some of this ambient. I did have, I did put the blinds down, so it wasn't as bright, but then I had this uh, blocking some of that as well. So it wasn't on Talent's face. But yeah, had a little T mark. Um, if they wanted to stand, director on the chair. Do have another director's chair that I'll put here if they want to sit. But yeah, not a bad little setup just in my living room. Um, it does get pretty echoey in here because we do have um, wood floors and the ceilings are pretty high. So we left the rug in here to kind of dampen some of that noise. And then obviously the, the sound blanket um, helps with some of the reverb as well as the, the couches as well. Um, but yeah, and then I had just the FX3 set up with a 50 uh, 1.2 G Master. I think I was rocking um, at around... Yeah, 1.2 on the iris, but I, I think we ended up going with like an F2 just to sharpen everything a little bit more. And then, like I said, the native um, base ISO, uh, 12,800. And then I think I did a custom white balance of like 5,200 with a white card. But yeah, that was kind of the setup for today. Um, pretty nice that I was able to do it in my living room. So I got set up the night before, um, so that way talent can just roll up and we're ready to go. But um, yeah, complete overkill for what it is, but you know, I'm always trying to dial in stuff, test things. So even the monitor, I was making sure I could mount it on the cart. And this is just, this is literally just the cheapest 32 inch TV you can get. And it's not going to be color accurate. It's not going to be, you know, 10 bit monitoring or anything like that. But for this kind of thing, it's more than enough. I can still dial in some of the, the custom white balance settings and all that on the TV. So I can get it pretty accurate to what I'm seeing on the monitor. It's just not, you know, obviously monitoring off a TV is not the same as monitoring off of a super high-end monitor. 
but um, it definitely does the trick. And, you know, with the price of this 32 inch TV, it's almost like an expendable at this time. So if it breaks, you know, I can just get another one. I have a case for it and all that. So I'm trying to take care of it, but it's just nice sometimes working with a little bit cheaper equipment because then I don't have to worry about it as much. Like if this was a $5,000 small HD equivalent, I would probably not use it as much <laughs> because I'd be freaked out about scratching it up and people touching it and that sort of thing. But sometimes um, with stuff like this, you know, it does the trick and then um, I don't have to worry about it as much. But yeah, I did have laptop over here to go over uh, scripts and then um, I was tweaking lights with um, my iPad here. I should probably go through and custom label all of these. Sometimes it's hard to tell. Like I have the two Ameren um, T2Cs, but I never can tell which one is which. They have this little feature where you can highlight that and then the light should flash on and off or just turn off or something. Um, I think it flashes once and then turns off so you can kind of tell which light it is. They can just turn it back on. But um, yeah, so I need to go through and make those tweaks on the Sidus app, just kind of custom label everything so I know exactly which one it is. Then I might put like stickers or something like maybe like a red sticker on the lights that I have multiples of so I can quickly just tell, you know, which one is which. Just gets a little confusing when you do have like the whole ecosystem of Aperture. Um, but, you know, I think on here there's like 17 fixtures. So it gets a little confusing which one is which if you have multiples. But, yeah, one thing with filming in a house is there's always like little things um, that you don't realize make a ton of noise that actually do. So like we had to turn off the AC uh, during filming. So it got pretty hot here in Arkansas. I think we're in the hundreds or something um, degree wise. So it was pretty hot. We had to, you know, turn it off when we were filming, but in between takes, turn it back on. And then the fridge was making a ton of noise. Um, so had to unplug that. Um, we have like an ice maker and, and stuff that would occasionally rattle every couple of minutes. So yeah, just the little things that you have to think about when you're filming, not in like a secured location. We also have a dog out there. You know, every once in a while he might bark or something. So we had to be mindful of that. But yeah, so that's kind of what my Friday was looking like. Yeah, so this is what the frame looked like. Um, I wasn't able to show any of the footage of the actual um, shoot. So I had my wife uh, stand in so you guys could kind of see what the frame looked like, as well as the lighting and the background and all that. But yeah, it was very simple um, setup. They just wanted a very neutral look. You guys can look at the tech specs that I received from the client. Um, very, very basic stuff. But yeah, overall, I felt like it looked really nice. Um, I tried to shape the light as much as possible. Um, I had the catch light coming in from the uh, lantern. So that was kind of a nice um, look as well. And then um, they wanted to go with a very neutral background. I had like a white seamless or a gray seamless and they went with the gray and I felt like it looked pretty good. So as soon as we were done with the shoot, I had to get everything out of the living room. Um, my kids had to leave for a little bit so we could film. And I just wanted to make sure when they came back, they weren't going to trip on anything and get hurt. So, yeah, this was a fun shoot. Didn't have to leave my house for this one, which was nice. But, um, yeah, thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next one.